So we've all had those moments in life where we realized that we just royally screwed up. One such moment came for me several months back when I looked in the rearview mirror and realized that this brand new F-10 had partially fallen off the side of my enclosed kayak trailer with the bow dragging down the highway. Not a pretty sight. Uh, did quite a bit of damage to the nose of the boat. As I said, not a pretty sight. I'm Eddie McRae of Riverman Fishing in Nukanoo, and in this video, I'm going to go over the basics of plastic welding, and I'm going to show you exactly how I repaired this F-10. So hopefully in the future, if you ever have any of those unlucky moments of your own, you'll be prepared with a little knowledge and a little insight to make those repairs on your own and get right back out on the water. Okay, a uh, few quick things about this repair. As you can see, it's probably going to be pretty extensive. Uh, and as such, with me coming from somewhat of an automotive body repair background, I'm going to approach this repair basically the same way or with the same theories and principles as I would a patch panel repair and a restoration. Um, as far as steps involved, general steps, we're going to cut out the area to be repaired, then we're going to fit a patch panel back in, we're going to weld that patch panel back in, and then we're going to try to blend that patch panel to where it's not so cosmetically visible. Uh, of course, with this being a plastic kayak and it not having a painted surface, it, the, the cosmetic visible pleasing end of it is going to be a little harder to accomplish than it would be per se in a restoration automotive wise. Uh, at any rate, hopefully I'll have good luck with it. Okay, uh, just to go over a few of the tools and pieces of equipment I'll be using. Uh, first, I've got a forced air plastic welder. And I've got a heating iron, which is also used for plastic welding. Heat gun. Uh, I've got a cutout tool that I'm going to use to actually make the cutout for the prepare. Some welding gloves in case I need them. I've got some wax paper here, and I'll explain in a bit what I'm going to be using that for. And I've got several different sized sanding blocks and smoothing blocks. Now back to the wax paper. A lot of times when you heat this plastic, you can use wax paper on a block, and actually it will help to smooth your weld out. The plastic won't stick to the wax paper. And if you look closely here, you can see where I've rounded the edges on a couple of these blocks. That's just to keep them from digging into the plastic as I'm smoothing and working those welds. I've got a couple of scrapers and razor knives just in case I need them. And replacement plastic. I've uh, got some scrap pieces that should match up pretty well and then a couple of more scrap pieces that I'll be actually cutting welding rods out of. Now one thing regarding plastic and plastic welding I have found in my bit of experience that most times your generic plastic welding rods or the, the square stock that they offer for plastic welding a lot of times isn't compatible with certain kayaks or certain types of plastics. So 
it's probably best if you've got a repair of this nature to actually contact your manufacturer and most times they can send you some actual color matched replacement plastic to use for your repair. I tend to think that the compatibility issue is probably due to the fact that most kayak manufacturers probably have their own special recipes as far as this plastic is concerned. I've got a sharpie marker to mark out my repair area. Um, also I've got a, a block here. What I'm going to be doing with this, this is just an old piece of spruce. I'm going to actually make a backing board to help support this repair area. And then underneath here, I've also got some gator patch that I may actually decide to use dependent on the final result and how well this repair turns out. So hopefully you can see um, well enough to kind of get a at least a close understanding of what we're dealing with here. The road rash did a good number on this. Um, and this actually up in here, it really thinned this plastic and it tapered it back to about this area right in here. So I'm going to have to cut back in somewhere in this neighborhood in order to get back to a, a full mill thickness of plastic. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, I've got this patch panel that the factory sent me. It actually is a pretty close match to what I've got here. And the more I've thought about it, because this boat is camouflage, instead of cutting out a square panel or a symmetrically shaped panel. I'm going to leave it round and I'm thinking these rounded edges will actually help me blend this repair in a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is overlay this and mark my cutout area. So now that I've got this marked out, we can actually see the area that I want to remove. I kind of got lucky in the aspect that I didn't get into this body line transition. So hopefully that's going to make this repair a little bit easier. Um, I'm wanting to leave the full nose thickness here. So once I make this rounded cut, I'm actually just going to make a straight cut up the nose, leaving that full thickness and a straight cut back from the nose. Once I've got that cut out, I'll bring my patch panel back in and actually match those cuts in order to fit it. So there's any number of tools you could use to make these cutouts. Uh, anything from a hacksaw to a jigsaw to a coping saw or a scroll. I'm going to use this Dewalt cutout tool uh, with a soft materials bit. So you'll notice I've stayed as close to being dead perfect on the inside of that line. Uh, that's just to ensure that my patch panel will fit 
nice and close once I bring it back in. Okay, so I've taken a razor knife and I've cleaned these edges a little bit. And I just want to test this panel. And I don't know if you can actually see that very well, but I've actually got a great fit right here. Now, just to explain what's going to happen during the welding process, once I have this panel completely fitted, we're actually going to come back and bevel these edges and create a V-groove, which is actually going to allow for a little deeper and wider welding surface, which will give us a little more strength in the weld. Okay, so at this point, I went ahead and cut and shaped this backing board as a support. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's actually radiused. I put it on the belt sander and radiused it to come close to matching the radius of the hole here. And basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit that up inside there. I'm going to attach it with a few screws, and that's going to help support my work area while I'm doing the welding. Uh, I also went ahead and placed my patch panel where it's going to go and marked for the cuts on it. So I'm going to go ahead and fit this support block in place and get the patch panel cut. Okay, I don't know how well the camera is going to show this, but I've got this patch panel cut and it's pretty close to final shape and I got a pretty good fit out of it. Um, let's see. See, uh, as you can see, I'll still take a little bit of off this edge and a little bit off that edge once I get the backing plate installed. But that's a pretty close fit, and it's only going to take a little, a little minor shaping. Which, like I said, I'll do that after I've got the backing plate installed. Okay, I've gone ahead and installed the backing board. It's not a perfect fit, but it'll serve its purpose. And I've already trimmed this out and shaped it and fine fit it. I've index marked it so I know where it goes. And you can see the fit. Right there. Pretty close fit. Now, one thing I'm going to have to contend with, I'm going to have to shim it right here because the mill thickness of this plastic is thinner than the body of the kayak at this point. So in order to get these body lines to match up, I'm just going to have to shim that a little bit. But other than that, we've got a good fit, and now we're ready to go ahead and create a V-groove around all of these edges that we'll use as our welding bubble. So I'm using a die grinder here with a carbide bit and I'm going to just take these edges off. Just be careful that you don't take your bottom leading edge away. All you're wanting to do is create that bevel. You're not wanting to open that gap anymore. Okay, so at this point I've gone around the repair area and the patch panel and beveled all the edges. So I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but as you can see, it's just creating a basic V-groove between the two pieces. And here's a look at the panel in case, let's see if I can turn that to where you'd be able to, there you can see the beveled edge. And then once they fit together, it creates a V-groove that you fill with plastic weld. So now we're going to get this patch panel mounted in place and get started welding. Okay, so as you can see I've got the patch panel in place and affixed so it can't move, can't give me any trouble while I'm trying to work with it. Uh, yes, I've drilled several more holes in the boat 
One thing regarding that, these holes are simple and easy to fix and don't worry about it. Um, a repair of this nature would be virtually impossible without screwing these panels in place somehow. You've got to have somehow to affix that panel to where it's stationary and can't move on you while you work with it. So, you know, once this repair is completely done, we'll come back, countersink and bevel these holes and fill them real quick and it's no big deal. At any rate, now we're ready to begin welding. Okay, so I went ahead and took uh, one of the other pieces of scrap that I had shown you earlier and ran it through the bandsaw and cut out some welding stock or welding rods if you want to call them that. Uh, I ran them at an angle and then also ran them across a belt sander to put a, a kind of a v-notch beveled edge on them as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on film. But that's just going to help that plastic melt down into that v-groove a little bit easier. Uh, a couple of other things before I get started welding on this. Um, as far as actually welding on plastic and procedures. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start out with a heat gun. And basically what I want to do is heat up this entire area, the general area. Um, because you, you've got to create enough heat to get this plastic to melt and fuse but you can't overheat it and you can't create so much heat that the rest of your surrounding plastic starts to distort or melt. So there's a real fine line and you have to keep an eye on it. And in fact, I've got a bucket with a sponge of, and cold water that I'll keep handy just in case I need to quench it and cool it down real quick. Uh, but at any rate, I'll start with the heat gun and then the way you know it's ready is once you see this plastic start to gloss over it'll get a nice sheen or shine and it's where those oils are rising as it's uh, as it's being heated but once you see it gloss over it's pretty safe to assume it's hot enough to go ahead and start with the welding and from that point I'll switch over to the forced air welder which will actually direct my heat to this specific location the, the exact specific location that I'm welding rather than a, a broad generalized uh, blowing of heat so to speak. Um, one other thing to keep in mind when you're doing this uh, you can always cool down and reheat and cool down and reheat so don't don't get in too big of a hurry and don't try to work with or cover too much area at one time. Well, like I said to begin with you don't want to create too much heat or so much heat that you actually start to distort or even worse melt the good plastic on the boat. So just keep those things in mind and uh, I'm about to get started welding on this. I'm going to just set the camera up to where hopefully you'll be able to get a decent view of it. Just a few things I want to emphasize on here. Just remember when plastic welding, preheat all surfaces, including your welding stock, to an almost melting point. Uh, this will help prevent overheating and damaging the surrounding areas around the repair. Uh, and this is what the completed wells will look like. 
Uh, you want them to be a bit higher than the repair surface that you have. So you've got some extra material to work with during the blending and level sanding processes which come next. So I actually began the smoothing and blending and level sanding process with an air grinder and a 24 grit grinding disc. And then I switched up to a 60 grit on a DA sander. Now you can perform these processes by hand or with power equipment. But let me caution you, if you decide to use power sanders or grinders, um, if you're not extremely careful, you can do some irreparable damage in just a matter of seconds by creating too much heat, melting the plastic, and completely ruining the surface. So three rules when using power sanding equipment on plastic. Extremely slow speed, extremely low RPM, extremely light pressure and a light feather light touch and always keep that sander moving to prevent any heat buildup underneath it. So with the majority of the sanding done I've still got a little bit more feathering to do but for the most part this is close to as good as it's going to get that gives you an idea of what the repair looks like. You can see the weld line here where the um, once I worked the weld line back down it got into a different color. The welding rods actually had a tan base and the camouflage was on top. Uh, I've got a couple of low spots here that I'm not even going to worry with. They're not worth going back through the welding process and risking overheating and I've pretty much decided I'm probably going to use a gator patch across the nose just to help reinforce this and make sure it doesn't give any problems in the future. Okay so as I would said earlier I had previously decided that I was going to use the gator patch uh, and this as you can see right here is the final result. Um, if you're not familiar with Gator Patch, you should definitely check it out. It's a super great product to reinforce a repair or just simply strengthen a weak area. Um, dries hard, super durable, and has an adhesion and bond strength, I guess is how you would refer to it, that it is unreal. It's like no other. Um, so definitely if you have a need for something like that check it out but anyway as i was saying since i had decided to use it on this repair i didn't really worry about carrying this repair out through the full cosmetic stages um, but to give you an idea of those final stages if i had chosen to carry it on out and just leave the outside hole without the gator patch um, after going through that smoothing and leveling process with 60 grit on the DA, I would have carried it on up in stages and in steps through to about 600, 800 grit, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, most of that would have been done with block by hand and wet sanding. Um, the wet sanding process just keeps your paper from gumming up with plastic residue. And at that point, once you reach that 600 to 800 grit stage, you've got a choice of either using a buffing wheel and polish to polish your sand scratches and dull areas back out, or, and here's another quick interesting tip for you, you can actually take your heat gun and just lightly wave it over that area, similar to what we did when we preheated for welding. And once you see that plastic start to take that gloss and sheen, you'll just see those sand scratches just magically disappear. So uh, just a few things to keep in mind if you were to decide that you don't want to use an overpatch or a product like Gator Patch and you just want to finish with a decent cosmetic finish in the outside hull of the boat, uh, that process will very easily work for you if you just take your time and you're careful. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, 
First, I want to apologize for a couple of things. Um, number one, not having better close-up footage through this video. I actually realized after the fact and after I was done with the repairs that most of my close-up footage turned out out of focus and unusable. Uh, but hopefully you're still able to get a good understanding for the process. Um, secondly, I forgot to include uh, how to patch weld screw holes. So what I've decided to do, uh, I'll be doing a follow-up video on that in the next week or two. Just a quick video to show how to repair screw holes with a plastic welder. Uh, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, I've also got a couple of other videos that will be releasing here within the next month. Um, anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed and tight lines and happy paddling.